we're oh, back. What's up, dude? We're back after the Doug time lapse of Doom. It's the next day, yeah. So we put some time into this head, got her looking uh, pretty good, and there was actually some uh, sort of nasty things inside this one. So there were some pretty big mismatches in the casting to the valve seats, and you know some porosity and some pretty large casting lines in there. So. There was some stuff worth doing. Let's take a look at some of them ports while I'm nice and zoomed in here. Yeah, man. So that's kind of the, you know, worked a lot on this area, getting that blended nicely, unshrouding the valves a little bit, just making sure the area right above the valve is nice. And then we sort of just, you know, cleaned up the ports in there and out. Didn't really change the shape a lot. Just smoothed them out. We just went through, cleaned up the valves, lapped those in. And actually, we found some issues there, too. So exhaust valves on... Uh, number three your passenger side cylinder were uh definitely definitely leaking you know you could see some uh, signs of foul play <laughs> in the in the ceiling surface so we got that all cleaned up and uh basically just time to reassemble this thing and then go clean up the rest of our motor parts and start reassembly so yeah so one thing that was interesting too is that we did do a leak down on this motor before to make sure you know it wasn't hurt super bad and the number three cylinder did have a slight hissing sound coming out of the uh, exhaust valve. Yep. So yep. that's obviously a byproduct of whatever sort of crap was going on there. Yeah, and it uh, made sense when we looked at them. So, you know, what was the cause of that? Not 100% sure, but it's all taken care of now. So we'll move on. Move on and time to make some more power with this bad boy. So we got all this stuff figured out. Uh, Doug's going to reassemble everything. And then we also... We're able to get all the gaskets that we needed from our local dealership, which just, for some reason, had all this stuff in stock. So, as unbelievable as that is, they had everything that we need. Heck yeah, dude. So, shouldn't be anything uh, in our way at this point to getting this sucker fully assembled today. Yeah, so I'll probably come in and, while Doug's assembling the head, I'll come in and clean all this stuff up. So the bottom half of the motor is just sealed with RTV. So obviously you gotta clean all the RTV out and uh, make sure none gets into the crankcase because like some other engines that are out there, it can get sucked into the oil filter, cause an issue with the oil filter, and then you have no oil pressure. Which is a bad time. Bad so, time. Yeah, man, we'll just sort of tag team cleaning this stuff up now and a few hours have her back together. Yeah, we got some relics now. We gotta get the bearings out of there, but these, uh, yeah, are going to be now boat anchors. Yep, in the trash. I wish there was something cool we could do with them, but... I mean, there are trophies. There isn't. <laughs> for race Tober. <laughs> I suppose we can make a trophy out of them. We'll see. We'll see. We'll do something. All right, tag team time. What you chewing, Doug? Tootsie roll, man. You gotta have a tootsie roll for your home cylinders. Well, it is time, like Doug just said, to hone these cylinders. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. So we got one that's got a little scratch in it. It's not too bad. And they're cast iron cylinders, so as they wear, you kind of lose, you know, the cross hatch pattern. We're gonna put a fresh set of pistons and rings in it, so we're gonna hone them all. Um, you know, just to kind of dull that scratch out a little bit in that one cylinder, as well as get a nice fresh cross hatch in these so the new rings seat well so we're just going to use this little uh, cheapy three stone job shoot a little lube in there and uh, run her through a few times and then uh, also much like the wildcat build you do have the pearlescent bubble coat ready from our friends at dipyourcar.com <laughs> absolutely man so i to be a little careful here so we took the piston squirters out so we don't hit those you can go a little too deep if you push this in too far you will uh kind of reach a ledge in the block which will hang up your hone and likely break it and you don't need to hone that deep anyways so right piston doesn't really travel down that far at least the rings don't right just be cool i'm gonna take a little tension off this guy. just be cool man so yeah there's a million ways you can hone things there's the dingleberry hone which we've used before there's the three stone hone which we're using now technique is that 
Yeah, it doesn't take long. So the dingleberry homes work great. We don't have one that really fits this size cylinder on hand, so we're using the three stone. Yeah, so back when we did the Wildcat motor, the bore was pretty darn big, so we were able to uh, get a dingleberry in there. But but you can see what we're after there. We're not doing anything crazy. We're not trying to resize this thing or anything like that. Just kind of deglaze it, scratch it up a little bit. So that looks fine on that one. Good work overall. So you're going to go a little bit harder on the one that's got a scratch? Probably, yeah. We'll do it a little bit, see what it feels like. We'll tr try to get to the point where it just you know doesn't catch your fingernail because it does slightly right now so if we can get rid of that little catch we'll be happy on to number two what an exciting maneuver there so much fun high speed so let's see if we can get that scratch on video here you know obviously I don't really want to talk too much crap about my own engine but it is there and we do want to talk about it so yeah so there it is right there We'll document that well, so if this doesn't run good, we'll have a solid excuse. Yeah, let me, hold on, let me get it zoomed in really far so I can get a nice screenshot. So, <laughs> like, like you said, if it doesn't work, we can just fall back on Everyone that. Everyone so. knows if we ever lose a race with this, it'll be because of that scratch. Yeah, absolutely. Not because of anything else. <laughs> All the boost being blown by <laughs> right through. Uh, Honestly, we're not too worried about that, so. Just going to hone through it, run it. Race motor, man. Very exciting. Looks like it actually did a fairly good job. I see hone marks in the scratch. Let's take a look at that. It looks, you know, worse than it is. So the scratch is actually very narrow. There's a little dark spot right next to it. Do it a little bit more, but she's going to be okay. Luckily, the scratch is kind of down in the bore, so you really can't feel it up top where you're going to see the highest cylinder pressures. So, you know, is what it is. She'll work just fine. We're going to continue doing this, and then we're going to get ready for this uh, pearlescent bubble coat. So we'll cut back when it's time for that. Honing done. Heck yeah, dude. So honestly, not sure I grabbed a big enough bucket for this. Nope. Oh, dang Didn't it. Get a big enough bucket. So we're not going to coat that the way we normally would. But anyways, if we haven't talked about this in this video yet, our final wash for engine parts before assembly is always just a classic Dawn dish soap and hot water with a clean water rinse, blow it off with some compressed air, and that's it. No, you know, solvents or no brake clean or anything like that. Soap and water, clean rinse. So maybe some other parts can fit in here. So we do have some other things. We have this uh, lower half of the engine somewhere near the sump. Uh, I've cleaned all the gasket surfaces off on, and uh, maybe that's ready for a bubble coat, Doug. Is it? I haven't looked at it. Oh Let's yeah, see. she's ready. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Listen, bubble coat went mean. full clean on her. Pearlescent bubble coat. So obviously we're going to thoroughly dry that and get all the soap out before uh, you know it goes back in, but. This stuff cuts grease about as good as you could ever want to cut grease. Yeah, and it doesn't leave stuff behind. You know? Yeah. The inner bucket's a little undersized, but that's okay. I blame Preen overall. <laughs> Actually, I, I blame Fonzie. He sent this to us, and uh, he should have known better. This bucket was sized for quad engines back in the day, not these new big side-by-side -side engines, so we might have to upgrade, but... That's a good point. Yeah, after the uh, Dawn dish soap and water mixture, it goes into a uh, little bit of water. Yep, we'll wipe it down with a rag, rinse it off, and be ready to assemble. Oh, that would hurt. That would hurt. Dougie, we got a cream, a cream fresh Brock here. Yep, she's pretty much ready to go, man. And so some we're cream fresh Preston. So we're starting on the assembly process. So basically, step number one here. So we're going to go through and we're going to check the ring end gap on our new rings. So cool. Typically you'd hope these are set up pretty well, but you always want to double check them. So basically we're just going to take each ring, set it in its respective bore. Separately we'll square it up with the piston. Look at that. A 
come in and check it. So rule of thumb, baseline, it's about four thousandths of an inch per inch of bore. Boosted application, go a little bit, uh, a little bit larger than that even. Oops. So you're just measuring that small gap that's left in the piston ring. Exactly. So right there, as everything heats up, that will close up, and if the two ends of the ring touch and bind, then you're going to have a bad time. So you want to make sure you've got sufficient clearance there. What are you measuring at? What was your first one? So 14 clears. Oh, that's good. So I think I'm pretty happy with this this one. Yeah, she's right at about 15 thousandths. So. so that's five thousandths per inch. That'll work for this guy. On the boost, that's so good. No adjustment needed there. If it was a little tight, you know, you just uh, basically need to file or open. So this is the second ring. Yeah, so there's multiple rings per piston. As you guys know, you have to measure each one for each bore. So we'll go ahead and do that, make sure they're all good. And if we do have to file one, we'll make sure to get that on video. But if not, just know that they're set up good. Yep, so basically, oh yeah, we got plenty of clearance on that one. So I'm gonna do it per cylinder. So this is our number one cylinder. So I'll now assemble those rings onto the piston, mark it number one, and this set will be ready to go. Heck yeah, dude. Things are happening and Doug is doing them. So he's got uh, all pistons done and ring ends are checked and gapped and done. And now it's time to mate the pistons to the rods. Heck yeah, dude. So we got all new stuff. We got new wrist pins here. Like Nick said, we got the rings on all the pistons. We got one circlip in each one. So basically, I'll pop this sucker out. We'll get a little bit of our assembly lube. Put a little assembly lube on it. So what are you using? Some lubricate? Some old school, yeah, lubricate. Lubricate engine assembly grease. This is the good stuff, man. Stuff's been around for a long time. So. Yeah, use it about a tenth of an ounce at a time. So. Yeah. Just put a little fresh stuff on there. Start to pin in. Drop her together, clean the lube off. And your circlip. Pop circlip in, Boom. which can be a little tricky, but yeah, put your second circlip in. And then that's it, man. We'll assemble the bearings in the big end of the rod, give this one final clean off, and then we'll be ready to go in the block. Pounder home, man. So we're gonna be using the uh, rod bearings off the stock rods. They look pretty good. And we've uh, labeled them and kept them with their journal on the crank. Exactly. Do this three more times and laugh is getting better. Heck yeah, dude, we're getting there. Heading in the right direction, finally. So. Upwards now, we're going up, well, it's downhill maybe? I don't really know. Going anyway. back, back together. <laughs> We've turned around. <laughs> what do you got here, man? You got a new koozie? Unfortunately, oh. it's not new, it's not nice, it's not good, but it's a piston ring compressor, so. These bad boys are all assembled. The block has all been oiled up. We got a little thin uh, coating of oil in the bores. So uh, yeah, basically time to start mating parts here. So if you guys have uh, seen an engine assembly with us before, you'll have seen this tool. Same old, same old. So I'm just gonna give the rings a little twist so the gaps aren't lined up. Put this sucker in here. Tighten her down. So nothing too crazy here. You pretty much just have to work the skirt in, all right, before the ring pops out. Exactly, so we got the skirt started. We'll make sure this guy stays tight. Just tap her home. Take her right to the motherland, brother. If it starts to resist, just stop. Yeah. Make sure it's tight. It's easy to bend or break rings, so don't do that. Well, we're getting deadly close here, Doug. We are, man. We so are. you've cracked the caps off the Carrillo rods, and uh, now you're inserting the bearings off the stock rods. Heck yeah, man. So we can see what we got going on here. So we're inserting the old bearings because they were in good shape, and we're making sure to keep them in the same order they came out. So the bearings match back up with the you know same journals they were on, and we're keeping you know all the caps with the rods and oriented you know the correct way and all those things. So. We're uh, pretty close here. We're going to finish getting these bearings popped in, 
put a little assembly lubricant on everything, and then we can drop the crankshaft in and nice. hopefully uh, speed the rest of this up. You know, it's uh, tedious, especially all the cleaning, but we're getting to the point now where we can really start slapping this thing together. So Yeah, that'll be exciting. And then we're, you know, on to installing all these gaskets that we got. And uh, there's some sort of interesting and weird things inside of this engine that maybe we'll talk about when we're assembling them, but one of them is this pressure regulating thing that goes in here. We'll show you what that's about when it's time, but really interesting and different classic Brotax. Yeah, there's some little odd stuff that you definitely got to keep an eye on. Some little springs and pistons that'll pop out and get lost and cause problems. So just take your time if you're doing this for sure. Yeah, obviously if you're in this far, you'll have wanted to have some experience before doing motor stuff. Uh, so there are interesting and weird things. Yeah. So. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So we'll cut back to this uh, sick time lapse of Doug assembling this bad boy and then get to putting that crank in. Heck yeah, do it. since we've done this, Nick Seuss. Uh-oh. Hey, Leo. Yeah, as we look at these signs, and we eat this pizza right next to these signs, I realized I've gained 10 pounds of pizza. It's not going good. It's not going good. No one heard what you said. Anyway, long story short, it's time to put this freaking crankshaft yeah, in. See ya. Ready, man. Got everything all set up. Push, push the pistons down a little bit. It's all we got uh, assembly lube on everything, so. Yeah. Set the crankshaft in now, Doug. I'm gonna put it in. Thank you, sir. Just set it in. Do Ugh. something like that. Nice. So obviously you're not going to get all the rods lined up the first time around. You'll have to. Yeah, we'll line be able to up. drop this one on, turn the crank a little bit, get the next one. But uh, anyways, there she is. She's in. You want to make sure to get these gears in. Obviously, yep. if you've taken them out, your starter gear and then your oil pump gear, very important stuff. It's a pretty intricate little little engine. So, oh. I'll assemble the lube on this side. Put the dropper in. And there you go, brother. I can't do it. Two more to go, and then also lots more to go oh, after so. that. <laughs> oh, everything still to do, but that's okay. We'll get there. It is time for another major step in this engine's build. Heck yeah, dude. And that is torquing down the rod bolts. Now, okay, everybody out there that is screaming, oh, they're supposed to be stretched. But, uh, yeah, we get it. We don't have the gauge. Don't have a torque. Don't have a bolt stretch gauge here. So... But CP does give you actual specs on a PDF chart. Yeah, so we're going to 30 foot-pounds on these bad boys. Nice. All and in one go? It'll work. No, I think we'll probably snug them up in a couple of stages. Although they tighten quickly. Not a lot of stretching going on here. Boom. That's that. So repeat that process a few times and then it's probably time to, what, get that bottom half of the motor on? Yeah, get that sucker cleaned up, put a little silicone on it, drop that on. Nice. Keep putting her together. We're uh, finally putting the case hats together here. So, cranks in, rods are torqued down, you guys saw that. Um, everything's ready to go on the other side. We got some lube on the bearings. We're gonna go around, put our sealant on this surface, plop it on there, torque her down. What are you using here today, Doug? Just RTV, man. Ultra gray advanced formula. You wanna make sure to use that advanced formula. You need the, uh, yeah. You need to pay the extra two dollars. So we'll just put a nice little bead all the way around. Very exciting stuff. So this is a big step. This is a, and one of the final steps too. So then this thing will be back together. So Doug's just gonna go ahead and RTV this entire thing in one bead using the grip strength of the Silverback Gorilla that he is part DNA of. Okay. Okay. The smell is in the air of our TV. It is time. We got our yep. pins in. So we'll just uh, 
Beautiful work. Plop her on there. Now our little pressure deal, that doesn't have to be put in before the case half is set on, right? No, that goes in over here. Yeah. So, should be good there. Wow, very cool. Yeah. Drop our bolts in, torque them down to spec. Yeah, so these are torqued to yield. We're using them again. They should be okay. Torque spec is a little. Surrey. Yeah, one time you get away with it. You got a little extra time on your hands, you should get new bolts. Right. But this is the situation we're in. No. It's going to work. I'm just going to say that it's going to work. Yeah, it'll be totally fine. I mean, there's eight bolts for a little three cylinder making just a couple ponies. Yeah, I'll probably just snug them up with a quarter inch ratchet, call it good, you know? Yeah. You know what they say, finger tight and then a quarter turn with a quarter inch ratchet. <laughs> That's called the finger quarter quarter rule. Yeah, yeah. Pretty what, much works for everything. What's the real torque spec on these though? Uh, it's a torque to yield, so it's a torque plus an angle. So it's uh, 15 uh, pound feet and then 150 degrees. 150 degrees, wow. Yeah, really, You're gonna get out your protractor? Really yield the heck out of them, man. We'll estimate it, it'll be fine. Doug has officially shocked the monkey. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, yeah, man, so cases are sealed up. Always a good feeling to have all that stuff captured. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the bottom uh, sump pan on now. Just give that old gasket surface a wipe down. You got these little uh, filter screens that sit in there. Just in case stuff goes really bad, right? But yeah, we didn't clean this part out yet. This is basically the sump, but this is really not where the oil is held. There's a little bit in here, but not a ton. But we got to remove this gasket, maybe give that thing a little wipe down. Yep. And uh, yeah. Pop that on, and then I think we'll probably flip the motor over and just go ahead and get the head on it. Ooh. That would be exciting. Things are happening, and Doug is doing them. What's happening, Doug? Time to seal the top of this thing up. Say goodbye to these beautiful, beautiful pistons. So. We're gonna throw the old head on her. We got this cleaned up. We just acetoned it. We're gonna go ahead and put in our new super high strength ARP head studs. Thanks to our friends so, at uh, Evo. Yeah, hopefully we don't have to get into this anymore. So this is what we got, stronger than the stock bolts. And um, basically, instead of the stock head studs, we're gonna use, or the stock head bolts, we're gonna use these studs in their place to increase the clamping force and hopefully keep that head gasket together. So the way these things work, is they just thread down in the block. You can thread them in by hand as long as your threads are good. And uh, a couple different schools of thought here, but basically you don't uh, you don't torque the stud into the block. So typically what we do is we run it down by hand till it bottoms out, then we back it off just a tiny little bit, quarter turn or so. That leaves some space at the bottom of the stud. So when everything heats up and expands, that the stud doesn't bottom out in the hole, make a bunch of stresses on the threads. That don't need to be there so just loosely place the studs in we'll drop the head gasket on drop the head on and she'll be uh looking like a motor that's so entertaining pretty neat also if your threads are bad there's a little hex on top yeah if they're a little bit tight you can use that to help out there it is so we are using an oem head gasket because we like those. So studs are in. I'm just gonna drop this uh, bad boy on here. I believe she goes like that. Heck and yeah, looks dude. Correct. What a beautiful head gasket. Yeah. Yeah, they are nice, man. That's what we've been having good luck with, so. Looks pretty. Almost need to cover it up. Don't know what that sound was. Probably, Something just fell over here. Pretty weird. A ghoul. Definitely a ghoul. Cool. Just one uh, more quick clean pass on the head. And then uh, cover all that stuff up. Oh man, get in off, get in off. So you can really see that scratch here. Yeah. Woo, it's a lot worse looking than it actually is. But it it's looks still there. worse than it feels, right? Once we That's put the head on, said. it won't look bad at all though. <laughs> That's a good point. There, so. All right, head's cleaned up. Got a uh, pin in the block, the other pin's stuck in the head. But that's okay, we'll just be a little uh, just be a little careful here. 
Be a little gentle, Doug. A little gentle touch. Wow. Drop her down. This is a big moment. That's, that's it, man. That side needs to go a little more. It'll go. It was a little sticky, but it was real sticky coming off, so that's not super surprising. She'll be just fine. There she is, man. Very cool. Yeah. Clamp Let's look at these. Uh, check out these ports one last time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Purred it out. Classic duck port. You can see some of the uh, jaws in there. Listen, um, it was a the valves. It was a quickie job, but uh, it's a lot better than it. A lot better than it was. So. Anything to make a horsepower, Doug? Couldn't do it too nice, you know, because. Matthew know why has got to race this thing, so we'll what a little on the table. Piece of crap, dude. <laughs> Classic Doug. <laughs> no, I think we're all on to everybody making lots of power. I want this thing to go very fast, and I just, yeah, I would not do that, so. Yeah, we spent $1,000 on your turbo, Doug. Come on. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. We collectively, as a <laughs> as a side by side block community. <laughs> yeah, dude, we'll buy a turbo kit. Fourteen hundred dollars, seven thousand dollars later, the machine's actually put together. <laughs> it's, yeah, just put together too. Anyway, uh, so we still have a lot to do here. So we still have to get the cams all in there. We have to get the back sump on. We have to get the fronts. I don't even know what back and front is anymore, but sump, front sump, back sump, bottom sump, side sump. Yeah, torque this down. Put this cover on. The stator cover on. And I mean, we're basically back to the motor. I think while it's out, we'll go ahead and put the exhaust manifold and the turbo on. Um, Cause all that stuff is easy to fit in the machine with it pre-assembled. So we'll do that. Yeah, we'll be uh, kicking here soon, man. This Looking thing's gonna real run good. before long. And then these are just our uh, bolts, or sorry, the nuts for the head studs that are, you can see down in here. Yep. There's a torque sequence that's provided from Evo that we're gonna do. How many foot pounds, do you remember? I don't remember off the top of my head. We'll have to look that up, but I'll go ahead and put the so there's also an assembly lube, an ARP specific assembly lube. A lot of sweat on these gloves. There we go. Yikes. But you put that in between the uh, washer and the nut. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and coat the washers, drop them in. Good work. Do A lot that. more to go here, but we'll be done soon. Well, we just torqued the head down to the specs that Evo gave us, and we checked them a few times. Dude. Everything was good. There is a pattern, so this is what Evo gives you. You kind of start from the inside and work your way out. Check them three times at the end, and go ahead and move on with life. Yeah, you can tell it's good, because if you shake it, the head doesn't move. Yeah, it's, so, it's a one-piece assembly now. Yeah, it's definitely fully connected. So yeah, man, we'll go in, I think, put the side covers on, do our cams, time them, bad boys. Really getting somewhere. Yeah, so we're in the last few points here of assembly, and then it's uh, probably going to be uh, end of this video time, and the next video is installation and ripping. Oh yeah. Very oh, exciting. Yeah. So we'll finish this up. The uh, GoPros unfortunately died, so I'll re-up that, because this is really no big deal. We're just putting bolts and gaskets back on. Yeah. Nothing special. Right. We'll save you the details <laughs> on the rest of that. So. Yeah. When we get to the camshafts, we'll talk about that. All right. Let's knock it out. Yep. Like Doug just said, it's been a long day so far, but uh, we're getting there. Yeah, we're uh, we're getting close, man. So uh, what we just did was we positioned the motor um, to accept the camshaft. So please we take these. Rolled it over and uh, we got the middle cylinder at top dead center, which is what you do on the X3 motor to set the camshaft. So um, middle cylinder, essentially piston is at the top. So we're gonna go in. We got these all cleaned out. We're gonna put our uh, cam buckets back in and then we'll set the camshaft assembly on get them all timed be ready to go so there's you know tools that you can use for this there's uh, actually a crankshaft locking tool you can get from can am you can use piston stops you know and a degree wheel to find top dead center you know 
a lot of different ways to do it, but you don't really need those things. If you're careful, you just roll the motor, get the middle piston up, you know, right at the top, hold it, get your cams in position, and uh, send her down the road. So that's what we're doing. Good to hear it. It's about to beast again. Guilty Dougie's gonna make it rip, yeah. Though it's easy to pretend, it's gonna whip the YXZ. <laughs> Should have known better than to waste his time on beast mode, cause it's so fast, yeah. So, here we go. We got the buckets in, we got them moved up, uh, middle cylinders at top dead center. We got our cam carrier assembly, and you'll see on the cam <coughs> gears, um, they're marked intake and exhaust. So obviously, pay attention to which one is which. Um, both sprockets have the same mark since it's the same part number, but on your intake, you want to make sure your intake is up parallel to the top of the head and on the exhaust same thing for the exhaust marking so i got to double check i don't remember for sure if the marks point at each other or if they point away from one another on top of the head we'll look at the cam and figure that out but i'd be willing to bet they point at each other that looks look at the spread of the shafts oh yeah that's right you can tell by the shaft spread, bro. By the shaft spread. Book checked. Okay, yeah, so it does, they do point at each other. So we got the intake there, we got the exhaust there. And with these, you can actually just set the cam assembly in, start everything, and then we'll be able to go in and set the chain over in the correct timing. Pretty darn cool, man. Yeah, pretty slick. So we'll get the bolts started. They are somewhere in, one in of this pile of bolts bags things have gotten a little messy here but i'll help you out doug there they are oh i won't have to help you out anymore so from here basically like doug said we're going to line this up get the bolts in and then uh, start the timing procedure which we'll show you in one second little dog but real heck yeah dude so we got the cams in tightened down number two still at top dead center we got them lined up marks pointed at each other we put the little uh guide in on top to hold the chain from skipping and then uh we're gonna go ahead and just put the chain tensioner in now and uh give her a couple rolls make sure the alignment still looks good the tensioner goes in there it's a little spring actuated didgeridoo yeah, there's a plunger there's a spring and it pushes on a piece of plastic that sits on the cam chain yep that you can't really see right now and then you got a plug with a washer on it so watch as you see that do that again that was pretty cool Look at that. Tightens up the chain. You Tightens can see it. Suck it right up. Boom. So yeah, we'll snug this guy up. Which is this? T something? T. 45? 53 million. Dang, big dog. So yeah, we're going to tighten that bad boy up and then Doug's going to roll over the engine to make sure everything's still good. And I guess good in the sense that it's, you know, this is probably an interference engine, which means the valves will touch the pistons if things are out of time. If things are not good <laughs> spin maybe we'll get a wrench yeah. in here to do that too much compression now dude with all that that whole new setup yeah, everything's looking really good man very 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 excited about this thing being back together and built for power so Doug just confirmed timing was good and it was so now we're putting these little valve not valve, sorry, spark plug hole seals back in the head. And then we'll get the valve cover back on. And then this gigantic stator cover back on. Yeah, 1,700 bolts. 17,000 bolts later. And then we'll uh, just cut to this thing being finished. So this isn't really any sort of how-to on this part because there isn't much to learn. You guys have seen us take this off and seeing us put it back on, not that exciting. Plus it cuts a lot of time down if I just help Doug out. Yeah. Pretty much just wrapping this thing up now. We had discussed painting this valve cover to make it look cool like we've done in the past, but I'm approaching probably 10 hours in the garage today. And uh, Nick's been here a long time as well. Basically looks good just the way it is at this yeah. point. So tighten that sucker down. Yep, and we'll get this one going over here. And uh, in a few seconds, this thing will be done. Turning up. Mother freaking race mode on the header, dude. Heck yeah, dude. Long day. It takes a long time to put a motor together. Real tedious job, but I think it turned out well. So, very uh, excited to get this sucker back in, see what a fresh motor in uh, beast mode does, and be able to really turn it up. 
without worrying about things too much. Yep. Like I think prior we were at the level where maybe you start to second guess turning it up a whole lot further. So yeah, especially on like bone stock head stud or head bolts. Yeah, like, those are not miles. great. So now sky's the limit. So think it'll be good, man. Tomorrow we'll throw this uh, sucker back in the machine and give it a rip, which will be two days from now for you guys. Sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> That's how, how it works. So. Such is life. Yeah. Thanks again for being with us. Appreciate it. Hope you like the, uh, you know, a little more technical, slower paced video. I know, uh, you know, we do these occasionally, so let us know if you enjoyed it, you know, or want to see more of this stuff, or if you didn't like it, you know, let us know what you thought. And, uh, yeah, just thanks for being with us. Of course, you guys subscribe and watch and donate on Patreon, buy our parts on the parts site. All those things are what allows us to do everything we do here, including projects like this. So thank you very much. We have a blast with this kind of stuff. We really enjoy bringing it to you. So if you uh, haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that. We'll be uh, doing three videos a week. They're coming every couple of days. So stick around with us. Make sure your notifications are on, and we'll see you in a couple days for a good rip. Boom. Yep. See ya. Next time you see this thing, it's going to be in beast mode. Well, be being put in beast mode. Being anyway, put in beast mode. Yeah, anyway. Then ripping. Yeah. Ripping. See ya. Bye. Race mode.